Hi guys, it's meteorologist Alexandra Cranford. I'm getting you just a quick update here on Hurricane Laura in case you missed our Channel 4 update on air. This is our Facebook Live just kind of covering what's happened with the 1 p.m. advisory with Hurricane Laura. Notice that not much has changed since the 10 a.m. advisory, if you happen to catch that. We are still seeing Hurricane Laura currently as a Category 1 hurricane. Pressure is 990 millibars. It's moving west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. Still a pretty good speed, not as quickly as a little earlier when it was at 20 miles per hour, for example, last night, but it is still going fairly fast and winds are at 75 miles per hour maximum sustained winds. One thing you might note if you can see those grays and whites on the northeastern side of the system, those are some higher cloud tops indicating some stronger thunderstorms trying to get going and we're going to see that maybe continuing to wrap around as we are anticipating Laura to intensify. The Gulf waters are very warm. There's not a lot of wind shear. So although it's not uh, exhibiting that perfect classic spiral formation just yet, there are strong winds and we are expecting it to probably continue to strengthen and get a little more organized, maybe with a more apparent tropical look to it with the spiraling as we get into Wednesday especially. So its center right now is 525 miles southeast of Lake Charles. And unfortunately, that is an area that's going to really be uh, preparing, I think, at least uh, tonight and hopefully will be prepared for tomorrow because this is going to be making landfall very close to Lake Charles or along the southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana state line area. It is expected to reach Category 3 st status. That would be a major hurricane. That's Category 3 and above with maybe 115 mile per hour winds by tomorrow afternoon and evening. So that's something we'll watch closely for. And it does look like that rapid intensification. That's what we call it when it can really just uh, ramp up with intensity pretty quickly. That might be a phenomenon that could, could happen tomorrow. And that does happen from time to time with certain tropical systems. By early Thursday morning, it may still be a category one storm somewhere to the northeast of Houston, kind of working northward along the Louisiana or deep east Texas state line area and then it might cross pretty close to perhaps Shreveport or the Arklatex as we get into Thursday evening. One thing that we've been talking about is the fact that even though the track is taking uh, this this path and it's going to the north and then it will get caught up in westerly winds here mid-latitude westerlies which will push it off to the east so although it is taking this curve and staying really away as far as the center goes from New Orleans as it moves to the north it will still be dragging in moisture on the eastern side of the system. So we will still have rain for New Orleans and southeast Louisiana by Thursday and Friday. So let me show you a couple of the warnings that are in place. The red shaded areas over southeast Texas from around Galveston all the way um, to southwest Louisiana are hurricane warnings. Tropical storm warnings extend into our extreme southern parishes, Terrebonne, Lafourche, Southern Jefferson, Southern Plaquemines, and that will be due to maybe some it looks like possibly low end tropical storm winds for inland areas here uh, could be higher, of course, off the coast. So tropical storm force winds are 39 miles per hour or higher. And then hurricane force winds are 74 miles per hour plus. So that is one of the significant warnings that we have. Um, really, though, what we've been talking about is it looks like the biggest impact may actually be storm surge with this system. So you may notice these are the same sort of numbers that we were anticipating with Marco. So if you have gotten those preparations done ahead of time for um, Marco, and then we didn't, of course, see as drastic effects from Marco since it kind of just fizzled out near our coast. Uh, but we are still looking at the potential for these four to six feet water levels along our southern shores um, for much of our southeast Louisiana coast. It gets higher over past Morgan City, seven to 11 foot storm surge possible there. As for the eastern part from the mouth of the Mississippi River toward coastal Mississippi, about three to five feet are expected. And along the lakes, maybe especially on the western edge, uh, since we'll have these strong easterly and southeasterly winds, maybe two to four feet um, of surge are expected there. And that's the light kind of purple color is a storm surge watch. And the hot pink is a storm surge warning, which means that is expected along the coast. A couple of other things to show you for those of you wondering just what do I expect? What, what should I gear up for in Southeast Louisiana? If you live in New Orleans, if you live on the North Shore, um, any of these kind of spots, 
This is what we're talking about. The rain forecast looks manageable at this point. So what we'll have to watch for is just a really big area of um, heavy rain or a band that might set up. But at this point, it does look like we might get a manageable one to three or four or so inches of rain spread out from Wednesday to Thursday and Friday. So this would be a good thing. We'll watch though and kind of stay up with the forecast because this could change a bit, but that's what we're expecting right now. Increasing wind by Wednesday, especially along our coast, maybe even a late Tuesday night tonight and then during the day on Wednesday we'll have breezy conditions of course the coastal and lakeshore flooding that is the same thing as you know the storm surge that we were talking about maybe a few tornadoes this would be something because we'll be positioned much of the day tomorrow to the northeast of the center while Laura Center will be far removed from us, we will be in that northeastern quadrant. So a few possible brief tornado spin-ups um, is something we'll have to watch for during the day. And one other thing is that there is more model agreement with Laura. Let me show you some of these models here. Um, just give me one second and I will pull them up. These are our computer models at this point. And so notice the very tight um, clustering of them right around Louisiana, Texas, uh, state lines and so it, it is looking more in agreement here and that's because it's going to be moving around a ridge of high pressure building into the eastern Gulf and the southeastern US so it's it's a little more um, we have more confidence in this forecast because when you have a tight clustering of these models it really just means they're all showing the same thing they're in better consensus and um, what you don't want to see is a huge spread where the models are not picking up well on what's going to be happening in the atmosphere, which is, by the way, um, the high pressure building in. So this is what we're expecting. This high builds in from the east. It kind of spreads out and drives lower to the north. There will be a little weakness here, so it will be able to move north here. And then as we get into late Wednesday and especially Thursday and it moves northward, westerly winds in the mid-latitudes will push it out to the east. So that's why we're expecting this big curve around the area to the northwest first and then eventually to the northeast. As for what's going on right now, if you're kind of curious about, um, well, it doesn't look too bad in New Orleans at this point, we do have clouds, we do have some rain, in fact, some a decent thunderstorm activity for those of you right in the Hammond area right now in Tangipahoa Parish. This is all moving generally from the south to the north northwest. And interestingly, the rain that we're seeing right now is really more associated with the non-system that is Marco. You see the swirl here, um, pretty apparent on our satellite imagery and even radar too. So that's really why we're seeing rain today. And then if we uh, broaden things out, of course, you can see where Laura is positioned right now. It is in the Gulf of Mexico. It has pushed in and it has become a hurricane as of early Tuesday and it is still a hurricane Tuesday afternoon. Um, looking at rain totals, by the way, really quickly for those of you who want to see what these are. Notice that the Euro, this is the European models forecast for rain all the way through Friday night. For Southeast Louisiana, the Euro is showing about an inch. So that's certainly something that we could handle. Um, the Euro is, is really clustering most of the rain and kind of keeping it tightly centered around the center of Laura. So that's why it has less. Notice that the GFS, this is the American model showing a different scene, but two to three inches, um, you know, or two to four or so is, is also not too terribly uh, bad spread out over three days. So hopefully we'll be able to handle that. As we've been saying for a little bit now, really the main effect I think as far as um, significant tropical sort of impacts will be that surge for Southeast Louisiana. And let me show you one more graphic for those of you interested in how much rain will be possible farther to the west. It looks like maybe four or five inches to possibly eight or 10 inches with some higher amounts possible over that southwestern Louisiana um, area. So the center is expected at this point to be somewhere here and just on the eastern side of the center would be where it looks like the most significant rain will be. All the way where we are, notice these um, blues to purples 
and you can see the little legend here that indicates up to about two or three inches of rain so that's why we've been saying the general one to four for southeast louisiana so that'll do it for now guys thank you so much for joining us um, if you are just joining us i was just getting you a quick update on hurricane laura still 75 mile per hour winds unchanged from earlier this morning at 10 a.m it does appear that it will be weak, uh, strengthening in the gulf of mexico over the next um, several hours into wednesday too it's moving west northwest at 16 miles per hour and a final look at that path for those of you again who are just interested in what that is and haven't seen it at the beginning notice that it is expected to take that track to the west of new orleans and then curving up to the north and northeast eventually so that'll do it for now at 4 p.m. You guys, um, please join us on Channel 4. We'll have an um, extended newscast starting then. We'll have updates online, on Facebook, uh, on our app. A great thing to go ahead and download if you'd like to, if you haven't done it yet, just to get all the latest information. And then also at www.tv.com. So thanks again, I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a good rest of the day, and hopefully we'll see you at 4.